three. Welcome. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys and I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church here in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of our church family, our church board, the session, our deacons, and every person in this congregation, we welcome you to this virtual service of Christian worship. Although this pandemic has separated us spatially, we are nonetheless present spiritually together because the Holy Spirit has made us one in Christ. So let us now come before the Lord in worship. Our call to worship is Psalm 85 verses 8 through 13. God speaks peace to the faithful, to those who turn to God in their hearts. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear God. Where God dwells, steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. God gives what is good and we respond with praise. Our opening hymn, which is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fight Swick, is We Gather Together. Thy 
thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Hear now the call to confession. Romans chapter 10 verses 12 and 13 tells us that God makes no distinctions among us. The same Lord is Lord of us all and is generous to us all. Indeed, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Depending on God's generosity and grace, let us now confess our sins to God who is ready to forgive us. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Gracious God, you call us to step out in faith, trusting in you for all things. We respond to your command, but then sink in doubt and fear. We hide from the challenges of bold discipleship. We're not able to fulfill your commandments, for our purposes are never in full accord with yours. Forgive us, we pray, when we confess with our lips, but do not believe in our hearts. Help us to practice our faith in all circumstances. Lift us out of sin and into the arms of your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the dead, and by grace we are saved through him. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Let us now join together in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, tell us the truth we need to hear, show us the way we need to follow, and grant us the life we need to live. Open our hearts to your word today. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 14. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. Going to Jerusalem, Jesus passed between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached. Keeping their distance, they cried, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Seeing them, Jesus said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Recently, I received an email containing a coronavirus prayer. Coronavirus, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I cast you out. Be gone. Lord, protect us from COVID-19. Loose your healing upon us. Deliver us. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. So we call down your healing powers today. Heal us all. Thank you for hearing our plea, which we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The email asked me to pray this prayer and to pass it along, which I'm doing now with this important P.S. God will absolutely answer this prayer as we act with God to make it so. You know, sometimes you pray about things that are totally beyond your control. For example, you pray asking God to help a friend make the right choice. You can talk with your friend, encouraging him to do the right thing. And God will speak to your friend through the Holy Spirit, encouraging him to do the right thing. But God respects human freedom. 
And God isn't going to force anyone to do anything. So, what they choose or to do or not choose to do, that is entirely up to them. We can't control them, and God won't force them. Sometimes you pray about things that are totally beyond your control. And sometimes you pray about things that you can control. You ask God to help you, for example, to forgive someone who's hurt you. Forgiving someone who doesn't deserve to be forgiven is hard, but God will help us. God always helps us do what God has asked us to do. Sometimes, you know, we pray about things that we indeed can control. And then there are times when we pray about things that we can't control, but which we can influence. We can't control the outcome, but we can influence the outcome. For example, when a couple is expecting, they can pray, Lord, help this child be born healthy. That's a good prayer and one that we can trust God to answer. And part of the answer God is going to bring about is through us, through expectant mothers eating right, getting proper prenatal care, and following doctor's orders. Expectant dads can also actively help to make a pregnancy go well. There are some situations that are beyond our control, but are still within our ability to influence. In these situations, God will answer our prayer through both God's help and our help. This pandemic is one of those situations. When the Black Death swept through Europe, Medieval people could only pray. They knew nothing about science or viruses or even about hygiene. Thank heavens in this pandemic, we have the facts. We know exactly what causes COVID-19. We know how it spreads and we know how to stop it. We're horrified, yes, by the death toll. And we're scared on top of that. But we have hope. We have God who will help us. And we know exactly what to do to work with God to cast out the coronavirus. We can work with God by wearing a mask. We can work with God by socially distancing ourselves. We can work with God by obeying the civil authorities who rightly instruct us what we must do to live. We can work with God by calling our representatives and asking them to ensure that everyone has all the resources they need to live. Calling up our representatives is part of the answer to the prayer calling down God's healing powers. God is counting on us to do what we can do to work with God to defeat COVID-19. When Jesus healed the 10 lepers, he didn't just miracle them well. No, they had to participate with Jesus in the miracle that he sought to give them. When they pleaded for healing, Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. As they went, as they did what Jesus told them to do, as they obediently, faithfully participated in the miracle Jesus was doing for them and with them, they were healed. 
Our prayer is to be free from COVID-19. That's God's prayer too. But for that prayer to be answered, for that healing to happen, we have to work with God to make it happen. God freed the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt, but it was up to the Hebrews to walk with God to make it to the promised land. So too, we must walk with God and work with God. As we do, we can trust that God will make the way as we make the effort. God is counting on us to listen to medical experts, not quacks and conspiracy theories. God expects us to use the brains God gave us to act wisely. God expects us to listen to scientists and to do what epidemiologists tell us to do. If we don't do that, we're putting God to the test. If I jaywalk into the middle of heavy traffic out onto Washington Street praying, Lord, protect me, God's answer now and always is this. John, I will protect you as you use the crosswalk like you're supposed to do. The good news is that God is at work right now to save us from COVID-19. Through researchers working on a vaccine, through essential workers who daily work with God to care for us, through good leaders who tell us the truth and who work to help us all. So let's all get with the program. Let's get with the program by praying to God and by acting with God to co-create the miracle that's going to kick COVID-19 to the curb. As we do, our prayers will be answered and God's will will be done. Let us pray. God of power and love, you're with us in every circumstance of this life. We thank you for your steadfast faithfulness. We thank you for the gift of your peace, which comes to us even in times of chaos and fear, trouble and doubt. We thank you for your merciful arms that grasp us when we are sinking, for your powerful word that coaxes us even when we're hiding and afraid. Help us to trust you and work with you for your salvation to reign and your kingdom to come. We ask for your power and love to overwhelm the chaos of the nations. In every place of war, division, and pandemic, send your encompassing shalom, healing, and peace to restore and repair all that is torn, broken, and ill. We pray that all hostilities will be ended and all maladies defeated. Give us faith and courage to follow Christ so closely that divisions are dismantled and reconciliations are accomplished so that your perfect love may cast out all our fear. Increase mutual understanding and a sense of unity in our community, in this congregation, and in the church around the world. In our personal relationships, bring healing where there is estrangement and hurt. In our relationship to your creation, give us creativity and perseverance as we work to be faithful, tender stewards of all that you have so wondrously made. We entrust to your providence and care all those who suffer, all who are hiding from you, from others, or even from themselves because of fear or feelings of unworthiness. To those struggling with doubt, increase their faith. To those enduring persecution or prejudice, bring freedom. For those caught up in the grip of anxiety and uncertainty, grant the calm rest that your peace alone gives. And for all who face illness, pain, or even death, 
We pray for restoration and wholeness to fill them in heart, mind, and body. Gather us all into your salvation, and remember especially, we pray, Alger, Alan, Betty, Dick, Linda, Marty, Roger, Tim and Nancy in their new marriage, Jim and Rob and their family as they grieve Jim's brother's death. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless and receive these persons and concerns that we now name silently before you. Oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is God of grace and God of glory. Receive now the charge and benediction. I charge all of us to remember in this pandemic and in whatever other problem we face now or in the future, from now to kingdom come, God will make the way as we make the effort, as we look with God, look to God and work with God. Good things shall come. God's kingdom shall flourish and we shall find ourselves by our Savior's side. So live with faith and hope and love. 
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.